hi everyone welcome back to the channel so today's video is about how to deploy node.js rest api on render hosting platform so we will be using node.js so make sure to install the uh, uh, latest version on your local machine so we will be using express node.js framework for building the rest api and we will also be using mongodb as a database and we will also use postman for uh, testing the api endpoints so let's let's go to render and see so render is a cloud based uh, hosting platform uh, where you can uh, deploy your uh, front end uh, sites uh, your apis and many more uh, so you can uh, instantly deploy by selecting the service and few commands and you can choose your, the service that you want. So let's uh, jump on to our uh, Node.js API. So I have already created a, a Node.js REST API. So I will be going through uh, briefly uh, about uh, the endpoints. Uh, here you can see uh, like uh, I'm using the Express uh, framework and uh, uh, you can see we are connecting to the database we are creating the express app and we are using some middleways for uh, allowing the request and uh, parsing the input data and these are these are the routes that i have defined for this demo and we will be using error handler as well so uh, uh, our app will be listening on certain port number so if I, if I go through the folder structure, uh, so uh, server.js is the uh, starting point. From here, uh, you can see uh, we are using user routes. So inside the routes folder, we have users.js. And here, uh, these are the endpoints that we have uh, uh, defined and we will be using the demo. So I'm uh, using a uh, create endpoint uh, to fetch all the users to get a single user to update and delete so basically we will be simulating crud endpoints so uh, you can see uh, while for creating a user we are uh, you know using uh, post request and we will be defining the function in the controller section so under controllers folder you can see uh, we have a file called user.js so inside this uh, uh, function so i have uh, defined uh, the logic for uh, creating the user in the mongodb database so you can see uh, we are using a model called user so which is uh, coming from mongodb model so using so here we are using a mongoose orm which is used to interact with the mongodb database from uh, node.js so I have uh, defined uh, only few fields uh, only for uh, testing purpose. So uh, we will be creating a user with a name and email. So we have uh, verified routes. We have verified the model and we have also checked the controller section. And uh, if we see uh, we have a db.js file. So in the server.js initially we are connecting to the database. So I'm calling the function connect db which is coming from config uh, folder so here you can see uh, with the help of mongoose orm so i am connecting to the mongoose database sorry mongodb using the uh, url uh, that is provided by mongodb so let's uh, jump on to the postman to verify uh, the endpoints so let us check the fetching of uh, all the users let's send the request as you can see currently there are no users so uh, that's the reason we are having an empty users let's uh, go ahead and create a user so the method should be post and this is the uh, endpoint and uh, under body uh, we can select a raw and json format so we will be providing these two uh, fields let's send the request Okay, so the response we got uh, is the user data. So it is a 200 response. So let's take this user ID. Go ahead and call uh, 
uh, getting a single user so let's replace this make a request and if we try to fetch all the users so it should return the user okay so it is returning array of objects okay so let's verify the update request so here uh, i'm trying to update uh, the name name of the user so previously it is uh, test one right so now let's update okay so you can see that we got response with the uh, updated information so the name should it is uh, updated test now let's verify from the single endpoint okay so it is updated so let's finally let's verify the delete user so you can see the method is a delete let's send the request okay finally so we got user has been deleted okay if we try to delete again we should receive uh, error or response so user not found so this is being handled uh, from our logic so this is the high level overview of uh, the rest api let's go ahead and uh, create uh, mongodb on the uh, cloud so uh, mongodb is a cloud based uh, uh, you know solution provider uh, for uh, not only for the database we have uh, many other uh, uh, products as well so if you see the apis and the functions so you can also develop uh, serverless uh, cloud functions uh, just like uh, aws uh, lambda functions so triggers are nothing but http endpoints and you can uh, assign the functions here so uh, here we will be making use of the database uh, atlas cloud database from mongodb so once you sign up uh, we can start with the uh, organization uh, step onwards so i'm going to create a new organization so let's name demo organization you can see i'm selecting the mongodb atlas and uh, the REST API is, is also part of it. So let's see. go to the next step. You can add uh, uh, any members. Uh, by default, you will be the owner. So I'm just going back, uh, going ahead and creating the organization. Okay, so once organization is created, we can go ahead and create a project. So I'm just naming it. So again you can assign the members if you want i'm just going ahead with the default uh, member as a woman all right so we have created the organization uh, we have created a project the project is uh, inside the organization so from here onwards we can go ahead and uh, set up the database so you can see we can choose cloud provider uh, the region and the other aspects so let's go ahead and uh, build a database so we can select uh, the requirement uh, so since uh, we are testing the application so i'm choosing the free version so it is a shared uh, you can see it is providing this uh, storage and ram you can uh, go ahead with the uh, dedicated cluster if you want by selecting this or you can use uh, serverless for your use cases as well so I'm going with the uh, free version. So I'm choosing AWS, not uh, changing anything. I'm going ahead with the default uh, options. You can also name uh, the cluster if you want. So let's create. Okay, while the cluster is being provisioning, so let's uh, set up some uh, uh, inputs. So we have to create the user uh, in order to uh, connect to the database so let's set up the user okay so let's give username as test user so let's give password test let's create the user okay so 
where would you like to connect from so so currently when you are testing from your local uh, machine so you should uh, uh, allow your uh, ip address so you can go ahead and add your current ip address so uh, i have already added here if you want to uh, access anyone uh, without uh, mentioning the ip address so you can navigate to network access so from here if, if you try to click on add ip address so you can select allow access from anywhere so this is not uh, recommended but uh, if you are testing you can go ahead and uh, select this and add this as well okay so let's go to the database so it is currently provisioning as you can see so we need to connect from uh, our node.js to this uh, uh, cloud database right so let's go ahead and uh, click on this connect button you can connect uh, to the database from various uh, uh, options like uh, you can use compass which is a, a desktop GUI app you can also use a shell uh, programming tool uh, like it's a command line interface tool for accessing your uh, database information so in our case I will be using uh, the driver part so here uh, make sure to select the node.js with the later uh, latest version so I will be using this uh, this connection link so let's copy this one so I have uh, uh, created a .env file here so I am using a couple of uh, environment variables so uh, port which is uh, so our server will be running on 5000 and uh, let's add the connection URL here so here if you observe uh, it is provided the username which we created so we need to replace uh, the password here and uh, also uh, we need to provide the database to which we need to connect uh, right so let's go back and let's close this so we can go to browse collections so here collections is nothing but uh, a table in uh, sql uh, database but uh, in our nosql uh, uh, we call it as collections which is a grouping of uh, documents so we need to add our own data right so let's click on select this we can uh, uh, give the database name here so i will give in demo db so let's create users collection don't worry about uh, the collections uh, name here so let's go ahead and create okay so the db database uh, has been created with the collections uh, right so let's go ahead and update the uh, database name here demo db so now uh, we have updated successfully uh, the connection url from our uh, node.js uh, application so let me restart the server and connect to our db here i am using uh, i have added a couple of uh, uh, script commands so start command uh, we will be using node and uh, in, in dev scenario like uh, in our current uh, local scenario i'm using nodemon which is uh, uh, which will help us to automatically restart the server so if you do not uh, have one you can go ahead and install it, it can install globally by using this command or you can also install as a dev dependency like this so I have already installed it, so I'm, uh, I can go ahead and run npm run dev. Okay, our server started on port 5000 and uh, MongoDB has been connected. So let's verify the endpoints now so since we changed the db like uh, uh, previously i used uh, uh, the uh, testing database same now also we have created a new one 
So let's go ahead and fetch the users. So you can see uh, we are receiving empty users. All right. So let's deploy this application uh, on render platform. So before uh, deploying, we need to uh, set up our repository. So uh, let's create a new one. Okay, let's keep it public. Then let's create the repo. All right, uh, let's push the code that we have on our local machine. So let's initialize the git. Let's add to the staging area. All right. So I will copy the commands uh, from here. All right. So we have committed and we have added the remote origin. So let's push. All right. So our repo has been uh, updated with the code. So let's go ahead and use the render service so once you sign up and log in so you, you will be uh, navigated to the dashboard so here you can go ahead and create a service so since we are uh, creating backend service so we should go to the web service option so you need to configure your github account so that you will be able to select the uh, repository so you can see it has already detected that so i will be using this uh, okay so we should give a unique name so it, it is uh, like this unique name will be used on the uh, url of this uh, server later on so let's give let's take a okay you can select uh, the uh, region from these options i'm just leaving it, uh, it as it is so it is our main branch runtime is node so we need to uh, install the node modules right so we need to provide this command and then node uh, server.js or you can also give npm start so because the, the reason why we can also give is uh, we already have the script command here so it will will uh, able to start our server so you need to make sure that uh, you know the server.js file should match with the uh, file that you have created as a starting point okay so I, i'm selecting uh, the free plan so you can see the, the options it is providing and uh, here we need to create uh, environment variables right so you can select the advanced option here so we are using port so i'm providing 5000 here so we, we need to add another one so let's Alright, so everything is fine. Auto deploy is yes. okay. Let's create the service. So you can see it is cloning the repo, it is running the build command, and you can also see uh, it has provided a URL. So it contains the name of the service that we have given. The build is successful. Alright, you can see the deployment has been completed and uh, it has uh, started uh, on 5000 and MongoDB also connected to the uh, cloud database. Alright, let's go ahead and verify this. Okay, so on the home home route like uh, i have uh, uh, created a home 
endpoint. So it is just returning uh, JSON response. Welcome to the Node.js REST API, right? So this is uh, endpoint. So let's use this in our uh, Postman to verify the other calls. So instead of uh, localhost, let us uh, replace. Okay, so I'm just making get request. You can see we got the response. Okay, let's uh, simulate the other uh, request as well. So let's create the user. Okay. So I'm just uh, using the same request body, raw JSON, and with the uh, name and email. All right. So let's take this user ID. Okay, we also need to update. Right, let's update uh, the user as well. Okay, so uh, let's verify the uh, user information from the database side as well. So you can see previously we had empty, right? So we have created one user and updated also. So let's refresh. Now you can see that is a, a document that we have created. So let's also complete the delete request as well. Okay, so the user has been update, uh, sorry deleted. So let's verify uh, from fetching all the users. So again, we have uh, empty users. All right. So now, if we try to uh, delete the user, it should uh, give error response. This is not found. Right? For not for not found. All right. So feel free to uh, use the repo. Like I will, uh, I will, I will provide the uh, repo link in the description. You can go ahead and clone and uh, uh, you know try setting up the MongoDB and deploying on render the hosting platform. So that's all for today. Uh, I hope uh, this video is helpful. So uh, we will see in the another video. Until then, happy learning and take care. Thank you for watching. Bye.